wake up. Welcome to CCTV. We're in Italy today. And uh, I'm going to take you guys and let you listen to Paul Begley and Mike from around the world on this uh, video they did. Uh, it was a while back, but I want you to hear it, all right? So let's listen in on that. And what I'm about to show you from Milan, Italy is a flyby. Get ready. It matches the narration from Paul Begley and Mike from around the world. So go check them out. Shout out to Paul Begley's channel, Mike from around the world. We love you guys. Um, I'm using your footage because I believe it belongs to God. I believe it's a warning. I believe as a prophet and as a watchman, I need to share it as many people as I can. So God bless everybody. Let's listen in right now. Turn the music down. Mike from around the world. Mike, are you there? Pastor Paul Bigley, how are you doing this evening? Doing great, Mike. Hang on, let's fix the sound in. Make sure we got you loud and clear for everybody. Okay. One second here, and let's put you there. Are you doing all right, Mike? Let's hope that signal holds up. Oh, yeah, please. Let the, let the signal hold up, Mike. Okay, you still with me? Yeah. Okay. Mike, first thing of business. First of all, thank you for coming on the night before Thanksgiving. No problem. As a matter of fact, there are people out there that would like to know, does Mike from around the world have any turkey tips for us? Turkey tips? Yeah. yeah take the plastic off before you uh, cook it. <laughs> uh, and that's it. I know. Don't worry about the seasoning. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I actually did that one time. Uh, Pastor, me and some of the guys, we cooked a turkey and forgot to take the plastic off, and it was shiny after it was done. It all disappeared, and uh, that, that was a long time ago. But uh, and, and that was in the that happened in uh, quarters, and, and that was uh, that wasn't good. Yeah, it looked beautiful. It was a beautiful turkey, but it was a bit uh, you know a bit sticky. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, folks, we got Mike from the world with us tonight. We've got a lot to talk about here. Mike, we've uh, you've really stirred things up on the internet. There was a huge blog written about the May 12th, 2020. She'll be a very telling date. And uh, before we ask you about that, uh, I do want to ask you about this. I mean, look, we've had the Albania earthquake, very powerful. They haven't had one in 40 years. Uh, and also this arctic cyclone bomb that has hit here on this thanksgiving weekend is there any reason for this type of climate change and uh, or climate emergency oh boy you know what we're gonna have some more of those uh, a deep freeze i know this one's cold i don't know what they're going to call the next one but we have a development of well most are saying it'll be an average of about 20 degrees cooler than normal and it's forming right now these <laughs> fluctuations are not just isolated to earth they had a problem with two of the probes on mars they couldn't communicate with uh, one of the probes because uh, some of the colder temperatures actually damaged two of the chips i believe it was on the probes now these probes are set up to ss minus uh, what is it minus 300 degrees i believe it is but long-term exposure can really damage them so we have a shift that, that's nothing more than a shifting effect. And what it means is that the concentration of the sun is um, it, it's very intense. With any intense concentration of a heat source, right, outside of that heat source, you're going to have drastic temperature changes or fluctuation. So it's just like uh, in the desert. If you're in the sunlight, it can be 90 to 110 degrees. In the shade, it can be 40 degrees. Right, you can have that much of a fluctuation early in the morning or in the evening times, in the evening hours, and that's due to direct sunlight, right? And yeah. with those shaded areas, in our case, you have the earth which is tilting even more greater than normal. There's an event, a double wobble of the earth that is beginning, it's very subtly, but it's enough to shake up many of the weather patterns. Also, you have a tilt arrangement of our entire solar system, which is affecting how forces normally act upon it. There is a like curvature type event, which is also IR. So that means these weather conditions will no doubt increase exponentially. I don't really see it going down. I see it intensifying a lot. And those temperature fluctuations or swings are going to be quite noticeable. In fact, everything will be quite noticeable. And if you've noticed for the last at least two years, there's been a, it's so noticeable, it's normal now, right? Yeah. These events that we 
have are not shocking. They're normal, sad to say, because it is a trending line in effect. And because it is exponential in nature, meaning, well, somewhat exponential, meaning each year is about uh, three times more intense than a year before. It used to be uh, about 0.5%, 0.25% more. Now it's three, four percent or, or three or four times the intensity than before based on trending, which means the trend line is going straight up, which means some of those extremes that people speculated about are about to go way off the charts. Now it's just like a flame, keep a flame in mind, right? A match by itself is no big deal. It's benign in nature. You can hit a match, it doesn't do anything. As soon as you get the temperature of that match hit where all the ignitable material is, as soon as you get it to a certain temperature, it ignites in a reaction that will not reverse. It has to burn out, right? Just like wood catching on fire. It won't do anything next to a flame that has not directly heated up to a certain temperature. But once ignited, it doesn't easily go out, right? We're facing the same thing with these weather phenomena and the conditions of the earth. They're somewhat not noticeable now, right? Except for those who are watching. Sooner or later, there'll be an ignition point. Okay. And at this point, it's going to be a bad situation. Our infrastructure cannot handle uh, some of the winds that are coming in 2020 either. Hey, now, Mike, what's happened here when you talk about things are becoming so abnormal that they're becoming normal? <laughs> we had the three Category 4 hurricanes that hit the United States states back in 2017, the year of the solar eclipse, and they were all category fours. I mean, it was just insane. One of them had what was called, I think it was Hurricane Harvey had what was called a rain bomb, where it rained 50 some inches and just kept pouring. A term that we'd never heard of before, rain bombs. And then we had this past summer, we had a hurricane bomb on land. Remember when that came and happened right in land? And then now we've got a Arctic bomb cyclone of snow. And it and, and listen, today, this morning at four, a little bit over four or five o'clock this morning, the wind blew so hard here at my house, it blew the back door open, just blew it wide open, and debris come flying in the kitchen, and it moved my grill which weighs about 300 pounds and was sitting on wheels that were blocked. I mean, they were locked so they couldn't roll on concrete. It shoved it about 15 feet on the uh, patio, which is would take a force of like two guys to do that. So there's strange, weird. I mean, you told us that there'd be these thunder lightning storms straight line winds off the charts weird weather so you're saying this is just the beginning of it yeah some of the winds you know it, just like today some of the winds in the atmosphere up above 400 feet right there's a cap of 400 feet we're above 127 miles an hour today uh with no storms inside right what? there were vortices that carried wind down to the surface of the 88 miles an hour vortices uh people on the east coast they were uh reporting in uh, what they call them leaf leaf tornadoes or something like that anyway but the winds were so strong that they were actually uh taking people's doors off the hinges that was today now this these phenomena uh normally happen where you have gusts of up to 26 miles an hour and like i said before this trending is going up when we first began to when i first met you guys and when i was first on air i told you guys something that sounded unbelievable i said we would have 120 plus miles an hour straight line winds and that seems so unbelievable at that time right however it's closely approaching uh those wind speeds now that wind is necessary also um to support great hail right uh hail size and wind absolutely are are you know charted out to sustain uh 75 pound hail you need 200 plus mile an hour winds right i believe the bible so but i also believe that some of the gusts and some of the um, uh, wind speeds that we're going to experience will be 125 130 plus miles an hour and before anybody think thinks that's impossible the trending on the wind if somebody were to do the mathematics on the wind, the averages uh, starting from uh, 2000 and I believe it 15 or somewhere around there, they'll see an unbelievable trend line, and it's following that line almost, uh, almost to the number. So we see some pretty, and our infrastructure cannot 
it, it cannot resist that type of winds. If, it, if we see winds that increase another 15 miles an hour uh, without a certain type of build on roofs, people's uh, roofs of their homes, uh, they're going to face critical damage of their homes. I do believe that um, weather will largely be an enemy of mankind in this way. It'll be relentless. It'll be spontaneous. It's going to be unpredictable. And it will be uh, the average storm will really uh, frighten the average individual. You know, when forecasts come out, it's going to cause a lot of fear among people. And this buildup of fear, this buildup of uh, unrest, it will eventually wear a person down to the point where they become somewhat desperate. Because you'd think that we'd enter into a time where war would be one of the greatest things we'd face, right? No, not really. It, it will be the degrading conditions of what, you know, which we live, because you can't really, a house can't withstand uh, wind speeds at, uh, of 120 miles an hour if they were carried for, you know, 10 days. Just imagine that. Imagine the power goes out. They, they, how are they going to work on power lines with that type of wind? So, you know, these things are very real. They will increase. Um, to what level they'll get at, I don't know, but I do know that they're going to go well over the point to where our infrastructure can handle it. Well, you we know, simply can't handle it. Well, Mike, you know, and this is very good information, and I know it's true, because actually we can back it all up biblically. We can look at Isaiah. We know there's a pole shift coming. You talk about the tilting going on. We know that uh, there's going to be the earth's going to reel and rock like a drunken man. It's going to wobble. It's already happening. We know that we're going to see uh, intense radiation. The sun's going to heat up to the point it's going to scorch men, and they're going to gnaw their tongues for pain because of it. Uh, we understand, and, and right now, the radiation levels went up 18% the last three years on the on this earth. You said everything about straight line winds, everything, earthquakes, volcanoes, it keeps happening. So we know that it's in play. It is a climate emergency. It's not man-made, folks. It's the effects of the heavens shaking, and the, and the statistics are there. Now, Mike, let's ask you a question. You, you threw out the May 12th date for us, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but I've, I've gotten at least 100 emails in the last week by what it might mean by, well, it's going to be a telling date. Is it five waves of energy? We're going to, is there an, uh, a wave coming that we pretty well know the date of that? Is it debris? Is it an asteroid? Is it, is it something else? Can you elaborate a little bit on why May 12th is important? We got space probes out there. Uh, we get information. What do you mean? First of all, we're, we're right now, uh, we are, we have some very complex issues, very complex things forming all over the place. Um, these things are unavoidable. Uh, they, they will come without warning. But around in 2020, surrounding that date, it will be some of the, I'll just give you some support from some of the modeling. Some of the modeling puts a, um, uh, well, if you want to say tipping point, um, close to that month. Now, this will happen before that month. But most of all, some of the extreme exotic things that um, we're just not used to experiencing um, will have happened. I believe it will stress nations big time around that date. And um, I believe that um, there's just too many things centering that period of time. Now, my date of May 12th, Brian, is that, that's a two part thing here. I'm really watching something prior to May 12th that, that may or may not, you know, the, the chances are, uh, there. Well, let's just say there could be a chance when May 12th comes. This is going to be a very different, uh, a very different way we communicate. Uh, people may be worn down big time by that time, and it's it's not that far away. Things can move so fast; it can go from zero to a thousand miles an hour. Uh, speaking of events and things, so quick and and based on observations, what people are facing is 100% unavoidable. There, there is no. 
escaping certain things, right? There is just no escape. Some of the events that we will entertain are of great magnitude. And they're so different from any common any common talk, which it just wouldn't fit the bill. It wouldn't prepare a person properly. In fact, um, uh, when you're looking at something that is so massive, so enormous, by way of what it will touch, there's really no specific thing you can talk about that would narrow it down to any any one thing, because certain things bring on too much in the first place. It can literally bring on everything, right? And people are going to have to deal with a lot. They're going to have to deal with with um, with with prophecy, things in prophecy, right before their faces. Lots of people will have to deal with lots of damage. Uh, they're going to have to entertain the the, the idea that uh, plenty may have perished. Um, and these, when, you're, when when prophecy is is good, when you're distant from it, right? But when you begin to realize that there's no way around prophecy, that that prophecy was never wrong. It was just, you know, everybody can have their little advice, but there's one thing in prophecy that's consistent. That is the damage that comes with prophecy. That is the loss that comes with prophecy. And our lifestyles and everything else are going to be, you know, the prophecy is going to be altered. It'll be really altered. We may not have um, homes or something like that, you know, large pieces, large continents. We, we may be living outside or something. Right from the damage, we're going to have flybys. More fly. Have you noticed that we've had flybys, and they don't. They, they really can't say a word about some of the flybys, and uh, there's no way to track the rest of them. So what they say. The truth is, um, space is covered by optics all over the place, and uh, but there's nothing you can do about it. Right? There's absolutely nothing. So my very ideas they have good ideas that stuff's not going to work it just totally won't work they've tried that before and it does not work um they're, they're inbounds right now that they know about right now that are going to hit far before any any specific dates beyond 2020 right and there's nothing we can do about it there's uh you know it's left a chance it's left a gravitational pull influence of planets so on and so forth but if an object comes in from nowhere and hits it we had that happen this year something was about to hit the earth it was intercepted by something else that was about to that was flinging out somewhere else and there was a collision and it uh um, it, it, it just messed up the trajectory of the one object. But if this, if nothing was in the way of this one object, we would have lost North America. The entire what? North America would have been gone, right? No way, so way, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so Mike, so it sounds like there's a lot of near-Earth objects that we're entering into the, uh, a debris field that we're already getting, and, we, and I know this, that a lot of them are barely missing us, okay? They're whizzing by us everywhere, and we're probably not being told every one that comes so scarcely close. So you're saying there was one that was on the way that had it not hit maybe the moon or, 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 or something? Another object hit it. If that other object did not hit this thing. Okay, are you saying so another, so like another, maybe like another meteorite hit a major, yes. and if it hadn't have done that, we would have lost North America. Correct. Correct. Absolutely correct. Now, here's the, here's the not so good part. A lot of people say, well, you know, it's a one out of a million chance we're going to get hit by something. No, you've got it backwards. <laughs> It is a one in a million chance we will not be hit in the next 10 days. This is every 10 days. This is how um, people are out there, right? So, you know, you really have to watch the language of, of, of quote unquote experts. Of course, they're not going to tell anybody the truth that would upset the common individual based I realize on the that. science that they believe. Right. But the truth is, every 10 days, there is a slim chance we're not going to get hit. It's not the other way around. They, they speak as though somehow, by chance, we are sustained. We are not sustained. I've seen too many things to even believe that we're sustained. Are we chance. using any of our own technology to, to nudge these away or shoot these down? Well, well they've tried that. 
that the only thing that saved our skins are the other objects that are moving in all these directions in their space. And in this case, this thing ran into a cluster of other objects. There were a couple of cases where some of the some of the common meteor showers had some large objects in there. And if it if it were not for um, our debris field, uh, some of some of the um, uh, debris belts that are out there, more of them we're talking about more than the uh, more than the belts people are aware of, right? Right. Because they're looking at a ring. We're talking about a spherical uh, motion of objects. We're like shielded with many rocks. But if it weren't for these things, we would not be here by now, right? Yeah. We just wouldn't. Now here we have a problem though with the interjection of another influence, right? That protective layer of rocks, save it like a we're inside of a basketball, right? And and the basketball itself is made up of uh, fast moving objects, right? With a gravitational pull externally of this magnitude, it's pulling all of them, it's pulling our shield down to one specific, uh, to, to a type of uh, oblong ring is what it's doing. It's pulling the shield down. Well, it just so happens a lot of these objects come from the south. Right? right? The other half of these objects are coming from the north. They normally exit out through the north, but somehow through our travels, we're facing the opposite scenario. A lot of these objects will begin to come in through the north. Do you think that's why Jesus do you think that's why Jesus said, you know, look, there's going to be great woes, great sorrow that's going to come upon the land. Famines, pestilence, earthquakes, volcano, you know, all these different things. But because he knew there's going to be great, great woes, great sorrow like we've never seen in ever before. It's because there's the planet's going to be hit. It's going to be inundated with uh, direct hits from asteroids, meteorites, piece of comets, that kind of thing. It's just there's no way out of this, what you're saying. Yeah, numerous times from the north. Uh, this, this, um, this phenomenon, whatever's pulling down, that, that protective layer that we've had for so long, uh, it is it is powerful. It's drawing everything down to a certain type of orbit, which leaves a big gaping hole in our protective layer. Things will come through there. If, if you haven't noticed, there's been a lot of objects that have been coming in specifically from that direction that are coming closer and closer to our area, our, our area of operations yeah, yeah. to the Earth. Yeah. Now, this pulling of these objects down, right, is causing some of the smaller objects to trail. If something comes in, and let's just say it just skips over top and hits some of the smaller objects, they're going to be slammed right into the earth. So we will entertain um, people being frightened on these common meteor showers. You know when they announced we're going to have the Leonoid meteor shower and all yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. That's not going to be a fun thing shortly. That will not be a fun thing because everybody will stay awake at night wondering if, if, if their house is going to get hit, you know, if something is going to hit their house from baseball-sized objects, which will begin. And, you know, pretty big. They'll begin large objects. You but said that. Being baseball size objects, they will do damage. This is going to happen frequently. It'll be during the daytime. And the nighttime, there's nothing really to do about that. Okay, they're scrambling you there, Mike, for a minute. But, you know, you told us this six years ago, that soon there'd be these small pebbles. We'd first see the dust, then we would see the pebbles, and then eventually they would be baseball size brimstone, fire brimstone meteorite pieces and there'll be no denying it after a while and like you said it's coming soon are you saying that 2020 is the year of the awakening of this whole thing yeah i think 2020 is going to be a woe but more than an awakening I, I think we've had the awakening right i believe that uh th this is going from people realizing we could be in trouble to we are in trouble you know life is going to become quite uncertain right now people have a lot of comfort in their lives that the populace does and and they're kind of comforted that they're going to be around tomorrow the days will become quite uncertain and they will they will increase in their uncertainty you know and then there will be no more you know a lot of people won't have to worry about skeptics but they will have to worry about scoffing in this manner because they will point to a person who is in distress and, and maybe their home is gone and they will point to that person and says where is your where's your god now or where's christ i thought christ was coming to get you right right which means 
And that prophecy is laid out, you know, that's in the Bible a lot. Oh, I know. Which, which kind of breaks my heart a little bit, because if it's in prophecy, right, that means we were not truly ready. That means all of us didn't truly take this seriously. You're yeah. right. You're right, oh, Mike. God. You are right. I mean, every I, I, they call us doom and gloomers. I mean, that Paul Begley with his doom and his gloom, because we speak of the prophetic things that are going to happen. And we know they're going to happen. That's, I believe the Bible 150%, okay, 1,000%. So I know the things that the Lord has spoken both come to pass. And you, see, you tell people every day, you say, I'm telling you it's going to start, it's going to happen. We're already starting to see things. But people only see what they want to see. But when it starts to fall, when you can't deny, then they will turn and say, what's going on? I thought, I didn't know this was going to happen. Why didn't nobody tell us? Well, the sad thing is we got people running around talking about the end times, but they're not telling you what's going on. They're just giving you a fairy tale, a pipe dream. Uh, you know, sit on the back porch, wait on the rapture to be okay. No, you better understand that there's some things that we have to endure that the Bible plainly says we will. We can't just ignore it. And we got to be about the Father's business. But before I get preaching here, let's go back to the information I think first that Mike is laying out here. I don't want to get too carried away. Mike, okay, 2020. Big deal. Big, big year, I'm hearing. Uh, a total different thing than just waves of energy. You're talking about rocks are falling. You're talking about brimstone and a lot of different, the core of the earth, the magma's moving. Mike, tell us about that. Yeah, it is. Um, I think it should be obvious to a lot of people. You know, we talked about Australia not too long ago, right? And uh, that continent is hot. And they are just like we said, they're having an issue out to sea. These these things will continue to increase. And again, when 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 people see it, when they have to endure it, when they're living in those areas and they're in distress by it, I can only hope that they were somewhat mentally prepared to understand that these things were going to unfold in the first place. Of course, I know that many people won't. That's just like the sky, Pastor Paul. Um, a lot of people every day, instead of looking, they're looking for the big thing to happen. Here's what they don't realize. The Earth right now is emitting more gamma rays, right? Uh, this, this type of emission from the core of the Earth is going to cause biological sickness within people. Um, and as I said before, it's going to affect the animals. Animals are quite robust, but they will become irritated, aggravated. Uh, they'll do things outside of their own nature with these fluctuations. And then we have, uh, with any change in the core of the earth, with a magma moving, uh, we're going to have magnetosphere disruptions, which means the way we think and we perceive things is going to change. And we will entertain massive outages. They'll be sporadic at first. Um, outages of GPS, that means with your cell phones, that means with uh, drones and every other device that utilizes GPS. We're going to have sporadic outages of these things to the point where uh, most of these cars are dependent upon GPS because of the robustness of the uh, satellite system. But our magnetosphere is, is, is starting to do something no one anticipated. And um, I've never seen it before. I'm not even aware of this electronics, but it's doing it. Magnetics is, is uh, uh, that magnetic field is polarized. Well, how can something change about 50 times in two seconds as far as its uh, polarization is concerned? The current changes in the atmosphere with that, which causes a normally um, controlled ionic flow, right, that we're all used to, it, it causes positive ions to be emitted from the atmosphere. And, and if anybody is aware of what positive ions can do when they're emitted from the atmosphere, that's a problem. That's a severe problem. Mike, we have... We had another chemical plant explosion this morning in Texas. You told us five years ago we would start seeing chemical plants exploding everywhere. Two years ago, we had a lot of them. They were in China. They were in Texas. They were all over the world. And then you just said, maybe a month ago, you said, Paul, get ready again. We're going to start seeing a lot of chemical explosions because the chemicals are going to start reacting differently than normal. They'll combustion or they're going to mix differently. Is that what we've seen here in Texas? I, mean, I don't know the reason for the explosion, but are we going to see more and more of these chemicals? They don't even know why they exploded. They're stunned right now. Are we going to see more of this, Mike? December 10th is a, uh, a pulse. 
there's a pulse track on December 10th. When these particles come in like that, they knock the nuclei out of um, out of the um, atom, which changes uh, what that what that substance is. So take gasoline, for instance. If the nuclei is knocked out of that substance, of each particle in that substance, well, it's no longer gasoline. It's something else. If something is uh, maintained, they often separate chemicals so they won't combust and they recombine them on site so they can combust. But if the nuclei is knocked out, you have a chemical change in either one of those two. And the only thing that kept them from being combustible was the removal of something. Well, with that nuclei changing or being knocked out uh, of too many of those particles inside, it can actually change the chemistry of, of gasoline, of oils, of uh, gases and everything else. And if that is the case, like on August 17th, um, when I told you that date, that same day, there was a fluctuation. Yeah, in the there was. Systems. You told us. There were chemical explosions and everything else because yeah. the nuclei and those uh, otherwise benign materials were became explosive and they did ignite. Now, this same thing could happen December 10th and any day thereafter. So, yeah, can it do that? You better believe it. Has it done it? It's done it many times before. Um, they've also encountered uh, other things that have exploded in, in uh, space, tracked it. And the same day it arrived to Earth, you had chemical explosions out of the blue. Um, will it affect nuclear power plants? This time, it probably will. Yeah. It most likely will affect nuclear power plants this Every time around because this time we'll have penetration. Uh, last time, it was the pulse was abnormal but not like this one, it was nowhere near like this one. Th this one is very different. It's the beginning. It's the it's the the beginning of uh, quite a few, of a long durational event. So uh, these conditions we're going to have to get uh, used to. I'm sure that uh, hardly anybody will understand. But one of my greatest worries is this: because of the instability of the world right now in the Middle East, if some munitions or an area explodes, a military area, somebody's going to blame that on somebody else, and then we're going to have a uh, worse problem than we have right now. Because you're saying it's not going to be a war or a bombing or an airstrike, but just going to be uh, munitions blowing up because of the chemical uh, change, the manipulation, the nuclei falling out, the, 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 you know, the, and let me just say, Mike, this, you are right. This happened. You called it for sure on August 17, 2000. 17, I believe it was, and and now I'm going to say December 10th, you're drawing this line in the sand, as, as in, then and abouts, that there's going to be some definite uh, plant explosions and chemical explosion, that kind of thing. You're very concerned about it because you know the, it's, the pressure, the, the inbound um, chemical makeup, the waves of energy, this, uh, it's going to the shifting, the, the transformation within the chemicals, it's going to, we're going to see it again. So, Michael, let me ask you a question. Um, so good. I mean, it's good to know this so that we can prepare people. Uh, so if you call it a pulse, so it must be like a, a not a full wave, but a pulse, a pulse of energy coming from that binary system. That's going to definitely affect the chemical makeup of some of these uh, chemical plants or even munitions. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge worry in the Middle East. If, 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 say, for instance, uh, a couple of trucks on a convoy or something like that, they explode or a missile. Um, that is, um, you know, it's not triggered or anything. The chemistry changes inside of the um, inside of that missile and they go off. They're going to blame it on somebody, they, you know, and because it's uh, because of the tensions in the Middle East, we, we it's already a pressure cooker tonight. It really is a pressure cooker. One false move in the Middle East and there will be uh, brigades going at each other tonight not not tomorrow but tonight that could actually happen tonight but the, the situation is is incredibly tender it is in not to mention the political uh, happenings around the tenderness of the Middle East right now because you have coalitions breaking up you have if, if just like Benjamin Netanyahu if if somehow he does not hold that position um, Pastor Paul, do you not realize that because of Benjamin Netanyahu, we've not gone to war? Yes, I do know that. Um, he's he's holding it back. He's he holding is, it back. He really is. And if he's gone with a removal, if 
he is gone. It's over. I'm telling you now, it's over. It's going to be over. I don't think that people understand the intensity of those who dwell in the Middle East. They don't just um, talk a talk. And Benjamin Netanyahu has done some severe negotiating to keep uh, you know people alive. If he's missing, there's no voice of reason left. The other folks, they're ready right now tonight uh, to do something. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, they're calling for... Um, they're calling for some quite uh, large vengeful actions to take place tonight. If Hamas launched a rocket without Benjamin Netanyahu, there would be 10 to 20,000 people dead um, hours after they launch a rocket. So you are right. A retaliation of that magnitude. These 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 people in power that are that could step up if Benjamin Netanyahu is not there. They are not nice. They don't care about consequences. They do. They are. They hate opposition let's put it that way they are sworn haters of the opposition and they will tear down everything that's built up and we all know what that sparks folks the mike around the world with us tonight he's, he's being very plain very frank and very honest with us and i really 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 appreciate it. and our audience totally appreciates it because We've been sugar-coated, we've been pam pampered, we've been, you know, rocked to sleep too long. The realization's true. As bad as everybody hates Netanyahu, even here in America, you got people hating on the guy and they don't even know why they hate him. If Benny Gantz is in position, he pulls the trigger so fast your head would spin. And it's not just him, but several, and Mike's right, there's several, they're ready, because they're tired of the rockets flying in their country, they're tired of the hatred, they're tired of the threats, and these guys feel like the only thing to do is cut off the head of the snake. This is a very serious time we're in, but uh, we need to pray like never before, and like Mike said, you'd think war would be the biggest problem we got? It's not! It's the incoming debris, it's the shaking of the heavens, it's the five waves of energy, the pulses, it's the uh, the heavens, uh, it's it's everything flying at us. It's the end of time, really, coming racing toward us now, and people are not ready, Mike. They're not ready, Mike. What would you be, you know, going into this Thanksgiving weekend? And like you said, there could be massive war tonight. It's not out of the realm of possibility at all. It probably keeps you up at night uh, as you're working. Uh, uh, in the in the field you're in, and wondering what's going to be the next move and who's going to make it. Well, that requires uh, vigilance. You know, I would ask you know what I would ask that people they they don't lose themselves by going down memory lane, but understand the role as a Christian among their families. You know, a lot of people have issue with their families this time of year that are Christians. Well, I need you know just let me remind everybody that. The, God made you the believer of your family. The way you believe in Christ, right, is the way you believe. He made you that person for the rest of them, right? They're not, don't look at that situation as them being against you. Look at the situation as God putting you right there where he wants you at this time. So, you know, I would just ask for people, don't, don't, don't find yourself being drawn into conversations that are not, uh, Productive. Better not, uh, yeah, better not productive or any of those things, but rather remember the Lord, you're not there by accident. The Lord placed you in that so family. Love. If you're adopted, you're adopted, but he put you in that family and you believe in Christ the way you do for a reason. It is a reason for that. I would just ask the people, you know, they take note of that. Yes, and I think you're right. That take opportunity to show love. Take opportunity to use the, 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 the when the door opens to speak about Christ and speak about the joy and speak about the great hope we have in him and and without being without being drawn into the conf, uh, you know the confrontations and and the different uh, things that people fall out over don't don't let that temptation come uh, sidestep it wait for that opportunity to show that love and compassion and care about your fellow family member or friend i think this is a great advice you're giving mike it's one we need to really go in, pray, pray, pray about it, going into the family gatherings and let that light shine. It, it, this might be the last time some family members ever see that light, and you're the one that's going to shine it. Mike, I appreciate you coming on being with us. Uh, this is one of the most powerful. I thought last week's show was, but this is very eye-opening. You're very, you helped us understand why May 12th, 2020 is so important, and now December 10th, and so it's going to keep our eyes wide open.
standing before your throne I already laid my crown down And I worship you, Lord Beauty for ashes
can still love the sinners, but you're four percenters. Stop telling me what I can say. This political correctness. 